cobble it up straight away. Hello, I'm Roger Bisbee. And I'm Robin Clevett. And we're from the Skill Builder channel and what we're doing today is we're looking at a track saw. This is going to form part of our roundup of track saws. So we're going to look at each one individually and then we're going to show you them all together and compare and contrast. So that'll be coming up after the main videos where we show all these tools. Now we've looked at the MFL before but we didn't do a brilliant job on it. To be honest with you we tried to wing it a bit. We didn't really do our research properly but we've had a chance to use Use it we've had it away we've had it back and here it is again Robin so let's get it out the box and have a look see what we've got there we go the 240 volt version of the Mephel the most expensive track saw on the market I'd say now some people would say that what else we got in the box well you have you've actually got a fence with this one as well yeah. so you can actually use it don't take a fence parallel to something so you know it has some other functionality right. so you don't have to use it on the track basically you could just run it up as if you were using it like a circular saw yeah yeah that's, now, that's my correct. opinion of this robin obviously you've got a track saw yeah uh, you're used to using them yeah. my opinion of this is this is a little bit too good for your general ripping up and sight work you know it'd be a bit of a shame wouldn't it to use it for a, as a general circular saw yeah i think i think that's a good point but i mean i've had a festival track saw for many many years and it it does actually I can actually beat it sometimes it wants to sort of get a bit hot and slow down and apparently the motor in this one is far superior to, to, to others on the market yeah this um, is this cupex cuprex yeah. from what we were told about this particular motor and this is from a carpenter's perspective now so he told me the technical and I'm going to try and remember it for you it delivers maximum amount of torque is 1400 watt delivers a maximum amount of torque under full power at full blade depth so basically speaking it's proper strong and it's going to give you some serious power so why would you need that power you need that power you're going through sheet material quite a lot of the time aren't you absolutely and, and your blade's going to get dull as well so as the blade gets dull it's then about power yeah so i know that when you do it you put three sheets together and you go through three sheets yeah, at once if you can a some, lot of the time. Sometimes if I'm doing rip, uh, lots of breaking lots of boards down I might do three at a time. So one of the great features of this saw is it, it's got this what they call quick but easy blade change if you like. Press your little button at the top, flick that and the cover splits like a clamshell there and that gives you access to the blade. You've got your allen key in the side here so you can just get it out, change a blade, lock off, obviously that's lock the blade at the same time, always do this unplugged or if it's a cordless version remove the battery. So you can make a very easy job of changing that blade but while we're here let's have a look at this. This is the the channeling if you like to direct the dust out and away and it's also got a rubber seal around the edge so that you get the maximum amount of, of extraction. It, it's directing the dust out. But the other thing is having this blade like this means you've got a closed window and you don't have that port in the middle sucking in air there. So all the air is sucked in and it's obviously extracted out with your dust extractor if you're using a dust extractor as obviously a lot of us don't. Yeah you can actually put a bag on this and it's still pretty effective because of all of the gasket, the rubber gasket yeah. in there, the fact that the air is much more concentrated so as it's, as it's running up it's venting itself and it's pumping it into the bag. So it's a good bit of kit if you're working without your dust extractor. So when we come to depth stop here we've got the adjustment on the depth stop so if we're using it on the track we can turn it round and we can go on the track or off the track so it just gives you that extra thickness I think it's six mil or something isn't it extra yeah so it's on the with the Mephel it's, it's, it's actually seven, seven mil exactly when this tab is up that's exactly what you're going to be cutting on the track flip it round and that's what you're going to be cutting off the track so which is quite nice because generally speaking what I do is I have to estimate for that so if I'm cutting an 18 mil MDF with my one I add on six millimeters or seven millimeters depending on how flat the surface I'm working is. So I like that particular feature, that's pretty good. So that way is on the track. With that in the up position, that's the on the track and that's the off the track. Okay, so we've also got the bevel guide down here and when we change over on the bevel, we've got an indicator that comes out of the front here 
that basically moves our cut line across. So that if you're trying to line up and find out exactly where your cut line's gonna go, you can just simply see it from there. Yeah, which is a nice detail. It's this plastic edge here, it's telescopic, and it's actually coming in and out. As you pull that up, it pushes it out. This only has one lock off at the front, but it's actually got a rod that goes all the way through here so that when you tighten the front, it also tightens the back. It pulls the whole thing tight. So you're not just relying on that front one to lock it off in position. It does actually double lock. We'll get the rails out. They do a, a number of different variations on this kit and the rails are something special. Now, these rails are different to other rails. So here we've got the joining strip, which basically goes, can we do that? Should we yeah. join it? Good idea, take the, take the little end bits off, because if you don't... And what are we going to do with the little end bits? Put them in the box. Put them in the box. I like to put them on the box there. All right. Let me slide down the... Look at that. Straight in. Nice and tight. And there's a little Allen key that just basically tightens these cams up. It's in the box, but it's not in the machine. But what I would do is I would put it in a machine. But you can do it with a coin, Robin. Yeah. The way that this works, they've got the rubber, the non-slip rubber, the friction. Now, a lot of people talk about clamping. There are a couple of clamps in there, aren't there, Robin? Hey, so, there's your normal clamps in the sort of thing you used to slide in underneath. Most of the time. What, what would you say? Uh, OSB is fairly slippery. It's got a waxed finish. I think um, MDF is pretty slippery. So is yeah. um, P5 chipboard, which is what you use for flooring, for example. That's yeah. really slippery. So basically, the, the grip on that is pretty good, isn't it? I find there aren't many occasions where I need to clamp it. Mm. I think if I was doing a, a really nice mm. quality oak door and I just wanted to take a sliver off there, yeah. I might clamp it. Yeah. So with the rubbers here, the really nice thing is they're actually fitted into the bottom of the track. Um, and so they're not just bonded on like some, because with some, as soon as you sort of catch it, as you're moving it, a bit of dust gets underneath, it's not gonna stick back you've got to tear it off and you've got to replace it. So that's quite a nice feature about this particular rail. Anti-kickback on this is electronic, isn't it? I believe it is, yeah. Yeah, because that's one of the things, if you don't have your work supported properly and the blade jams, because you don't have a riving knife, basically, there is a possibility that the blade will jam and the whole thing will jump back off the, off the uh, rail. Some people have a locking mechanism on theirs to stop that happening, but quite honestly, I find it's really tedious, those locking mechanisms, because you can't slide the thing backwards and forwards like this. So this has got the electronic anti-kickback, which will stop the motor if it feels it jamming. So hopefully that should save the problem. Now, you want to tell us about the scribing, don't you? Yeah, so simply, um, what's nice about this with this particular tool, you're set up for your depth, but you want to put a scribe cut in. So Why you, do you want to put a scribe cut in? Well, it's just good practice, especially if you've got a veneered board or you might have a melamine or something like that, because what we've done over the years is we've gone from cutting from the uh, upside down to cut him through the face because okay. we're relying on what we call the splinter guard or the or the yeah. rail edge. Yeah. But actually, that doesn't you know it does help, but it shouldn't it, sh it shouldn't be the be all and end all with regard well, to because um, because basically that blade when you first use the saw, yeah. the blade excuse me I'm just trying to do this one handed when you first use that saw that blade will cut through that rubber. After that, that blade is running so close to that rubber. It's not plugged it. in. As that turns round, you can see that the rubber will actually hold the material down and stop it picking up. And it works pretty well, yeah. but not 100%. So what we do as um, joiners or carpenters, we like to put a scribe cut through. So we cut into the material a couple of millimetres, three millimetres or thereabouts. So what I would do there is I would adjust my depth up to three millimetres, run the cut through, then I'd put it back 20 mil, whatever I was doing. With this saw, it's different. So it's a one click operation and, that's and it. it's set that's you to three, it goes, it's, it's is... set you to three millimetres. That's the little scribe and it just limits the stop so when that's in, it'll only go down three mil. The other thing is once you've done your scribe cut with this particular saw, which is fairly unique to this saw, when you then pass for the final cut all the way through the material, the saw is designed to cut 
just, just, just off that mark. So you've got even less chance of it coming up and breaking out your top surface. It, it, it does it by a tenth of a millimetre. Yeah, it's it a very, out. very small margin. And how it works is there's a washer positioned in there and the washer's got a slight cam on it. And as it comes down, it just pushes it out. So it's a real precision engineering there. And I suppose you might say, well, if it's not cutting exactly on the line, when you butt two pieces together, you might have a hairline gap. But we are talking about a hairline gap. A I mean, yeah, it's... A tenth of a mil. No, but if you, if, supposing you were doing two, right? So yeah. you've got a 45, so you've got a tenth of a mil and a tenth of a mil. Yeah. So you've got two tenths of a mil, so, which is a fifth of a millimetre. So uh, to be honest with you, when you cut butt boards together, I mean, you know, you might be gluing them or whatever. So that it's going to take care of that. It's going to take care of it. So you reckon that cuts a glue ready joint? You wouldn't be looking to sand it or... It would definitely it cut, it would definitely cut a glue, a good glue ready joint. And I think this is what you're talking about here is a precision motor, high power. Obviously the blade's important. You're going to cut against um, a, a really good splinter guard there. You're going to get a great edge and that's what you're actually going to pay for when you buy a Mafel. You're, you're, that's what you're getting. A lot, you know, a really... Good I mean, people say that, that uh, obviously this is the most expensive uh, track saw on the market, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is actually, yeah. yeah. Um, I, you know, I mean, it's not crazy money, even so, is it? I mean, let's not, you know, you'll find the, the, the prices on the internet, but if we were talking 600 quid with the rails this, and the saw... This is a saw for the rest of your career, to be fair. This yeah. is a saw... That's about two gonna, years for me. Yeah. <laughs> but this is a saw which you're going to buy and you're going to still be using this in 20 years' time. You've got to look after it, but you're going to use that in 20 years' time. There's no doubt about that. You will wear out before this saw wears out, and that's the difference. <laughs> Blimey, now there's a test for you, isn't it? Let's see if that's true come back and see robin in 20 years time so don't forget this is going to feature in our roundup when we do our track saw roundup of all these different machines but we're going to take this outside and do it outside we could use a dust extraction on this to be fair we could hook it all up and do it but dust extraction is never a hundred percent and we have got expensive cameras sitting in here so our cameraman would thank us if we take it out into the great outdoors and do it there we'll still hook up the dust extraction outside will we we most certainly will okay all right do you want to say something about these um, rails before yeah we go? just um these are 1600 long which um and the reason why that came sort of my attention straight away is as you can see we're across the board sort of on an angle sometimes if i'm doing a raking cut for a 1220 mil sheet of ply or something like that. I have to put my rail on my 1400 rail and then move it forward. My other one, you know, when I had a bit on, it's too long. So that's quite a nice feature, you know? So we should just mention that this saw is compatible with other rails. If you remove that little inset in the base plate, you can use it with the Festool rails and so on. Everything but the warped. Okay, so let's go and test these. Yeah, let's get it done. Let's get some work done. No breakout, really. Nothing to worry about there. I didn't put it on a scribe, I could have done a scribe. Um, I'm gonna get Robin down, let him push one through because quite honestly, for me, the difference with this machine and some of the others we've tested in terms of power is absolutely marked. And I know, you know, it's a little bit more money, but oh, does it make you feel good? Let's go and have a look at this. This is the one. You're going to switch brands, are you? I am, yeah. I could be losing my loyal following to the big green and black Festool and going for the red and grey of Mafel. The only thing I've got to say to you, I'll just give you this little bit of warning first. I know you're an experienced tradesman. Mm. Thank you, sir. Without that front handle, I went like that, nowhere to put this. And got a kickback, did you? Did, yeah, I got yeah. a kickback, right? So thanks for the so, um, thanks for the tip. You have got to get a hand around there, basically. Okay. When yeah. you start, or I think I think if you met, we had a chat the other day about having a backstop set up. If you were doing something, you didn't want it to kick back, have a backstop set up. So yeah, yeah, but I was just doing an innocent run through the worktop, and and I made that mistake. So, so anyone who uses a rail saw may may know something what we call a back cut. So, so quite often we'll plunge in, and then we'll do a back cut, which is actually. If you imagine it's like using a router in reverse, it's gonna send the cutter mm, back along. Yeah. It takes a lot of practice and sometimes you have to do it because you wanna plunge in and edge back to a cut. Yeah, so. where you're starting. Yeah. So here we go. If you're letterboxing, stuff Let's like that. Let's give this a go.
can we check in, Rush? Power? Yeah, I'm just checking the speed. We're fine. We're, we're, we, were on, we were on full power there. Yeah? Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's nice. Um, well, I think we could be a bit deeper. Well, we can. We can go tight. I just think yeah, let's go to the undercut. No, that should but, be. we should be. Yeah, I know. I should be off that. I'm on. That's all right. Just go one. into that. It's yeah. only a sheet of MDF. Yeah, I know, but I was. Use the other side. Right. I'll be fine. <laughs> right, so I just push that down. I'm just going to push that down one mil. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right, now, yeah. you are very kind to these machines, right? And I'm an animal. Right. That's the difference between me and you. Okay. I, Let me uh, see what you mean by an animal. I don't have any finesse, right? Okay, so. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I suppose I've been practicing the gentlemanly art of carpentry and joinery ever since I left school in 1986, <laughs> and I do respect all tools. Right, just give it a bash. Hard. Just run it through as and fast you, as you, you can. You want me to drive it like a Ferrari? I do because yeah. because it's red, and um, and it's got a higher power motor. And I don't think you should pussyfoot about. We're here to test these machines, not be kind to them. Okay. Let's see what they can do. Yeah? Let's give it a little bit more then. Let's see what they can do, mate. All right, I'm just, this sort myself out here. Days, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be your cable belt. You are, are you? Yeah. Because I think that helps. I think that's what. Okay, so I went twice as fast as I normally would, but um, I still earn the same money if I go half as fast. In fact, so you know, I could just take it easy. Now, I mean, I must admit, I did plow through that. We're going through a whole work surface there. I'm looking, I'm looking to test these tools to the extremes. I don't want people yeah. commenting underneath. See the camera. You want to test this to extreme? Over. You want to try and cut it at 45 the degrees? Yeah, different. Yeah, energy. yeah, fine. But that's all I'm saying is let's give them a comparable test. Yeah. Let's let's push each one through this yeah. worktop Absolutely. and see the ones that stall and the ones that don't. I think that's a definitely that didn't stall. I think there's that's probably a really good way of actually just seeing which ones have got the guts, which ones haven't. Because at the end of the day, it's about longevity, and if it's going to struggle, it's going to wear out. So yeah, yeah. And also, no. and also. At the end of the day, I know you're not in a rush and you're, you know, you're a craftsman and all the rest of it, but I just don't want to be hanging around, you know, when I could be in the pub. <laughs> so that was the review of the Maffel MT55. Now, we weren't paid for this review. It's independent, as all our tool reviews are. If there's any collaboration with the manufacturer, we will put that up at the beginning of the video because I'm just saying that because I know a lot of people go, oh, you're in the pocket of these people, you're biased, you're prejudiced. Honestly, we're not. This has got to go back, which is terrible. Yeah, it is. Anyway, don't forget to subscribe. Come back and see us soon. There's lots more track source coming up on Skill Builder and also some other power tool reviews as well. Yeah, and your how-tos and all the stuff that Robin does. Absolutely. So keep checking back.